so it is career day today, and I told a group of sixth graders I would come speak to their class about what it's like to be on YouTube. So I'm gonna bring you guys along. Morning. Good, I'm here to see. for the students. We've got the channel up. This is always so weird when it's this big. Awesome. Enthusiastic crew. You know, I've done career day types of things before. And it usually depends on the age group, but usually you get a lot of questions where people wanna know how much money you make and how do you get a video to go viral on YouTube and that kind of thing. This group today was actually really interesting. They were interested in how do you tell a story? How do you pace a video? How do you develop an audience? And we talked about relationships and what social media and YouTube and all those things do. That was a lot of fun. I had a great time. So thanks guys. Now let's get through some more of this mail that is stacking up. Well, that came to the wrong address. That was somebody's car title. Huh? Good thing I didn't rip that open. Hey, Ted, a few weeks ago, I discovered your channel and I really like what you do and the way that you do it. It's so refreshing that photography isn't a soulless competition to you. It's an art and it's coming from within and you totally deliver that message. Looking forward to seeing more of your videos. I hope you like the card. It's a double exposure from 2015, which is dear to me. Greetings, Sandrina. This is awesome, Sandrina, thank you. This is beautiful. This is a cloth bound book that is beautifully printed from Pierce Leal that also includes a postcard of an aquarium scene. It says, From a Commonplace Japan 2015, uh, which is gorgeous. This is absolutely awesome. Inside the cover, it says, Everyone finds routine in a place they frequent. Our lives are made up of familiar places, places you may call home or someone else calls home. In all of that familiarity, there are new qualities to be found. Pierce, thank you. This is gorgeous. I'm impressed. This is really nicely done. Next up is a book that was sent to me by Richard James Palmer called Home Sweet Home, and it has a little postcard in it with another image, which reads, Hi Ted, love the content you release on YouTube. This is my photo book I have been working on for three years. It is based on my hometown of Newcastle in the Northeast. It is a working class area, but a beautiful place, even though the photos show otherwise. Hope you enjoy Richard Palmer. This is a beautiful book of black and white images illustrating one's home in place. This is really nice.
Richard, thank you for sending this. This is a really nice example of something that I've been meaning to address in these videos for a while, and I'll probably do a whole video on it. But the whole idea of having a place as a photographer. And so often I get contacted by people, whether it's on Twitter or Facebook or in an email, that say, you know, how how do you deal with it when you don't have anything around you that's interesting to shoot or you don't, you know, everything is interesting to shoot. And I think this book is a testament to that. It's about belonging to a place and finding beauty within that. And this is really well done. Thank you, Richard, this is outstanding. Next up is this wonderful little zine called Junk Miles. And this just drives me crazy when I'm not sure how to pronounce a name because you guys go to the trouble to share really nice things with me. This is from Jason Mahaki or Mahuki or Mauki. I'm not really sure how to say it, but either way, I want to share this with you because it's a really nice letter that he wrote in here. And it's kind of long, but I'll paraphrase it. And basically since 2005, he's kept a cycling blog and later went on to produce an actual magazine, which kind of fell apart, lasted 18 issues, and he stopped publishing due to burnout and finances, which is what happens with magazines, unfortunately. Anyway, um, he mentions in here after that, he started another website called Junk Miles. And here's the neat part. He said, a couple months ago, I saw your videos on photo zines. And after watching them, I became motivated to publish one of my own. I swore I would never try to publish another magazine again, but this just felt right. And I'm doing it without any kind of preconceived notion of financial gains or making a career out of it. I just want to share the photos I capture with my friends and family. And if other people want an issue, that's totally up to them. Anyway, long story short, I made my first junk mile zine a month or so ago, and I wanted to share a copy with you to thank you for helping me get my creative mojo back. I hope you enjoyed looking at it. All of the photos in this issue were taken while riding my bike through rural Michigan over the last year and a half. It has been fun to produce some printed content again and even more fun to keep logging the miles on the bike with my camera as I continue to learn and grow as a photographer. Not much I can add to that. This is amazing. Jason, thank you for sharing this and thank you for your letter. It really means a lot and I'm so glad that this stuff has inspired you to make something. That is always the most important thing. Thank you. Next up are two zines that were sent to me from Ethan Dean. And before I get into this, I want you to note how handmade everything on here is. These are really cool. Even the note he wrote to me is written on a piece of torn butcher paper, handwritten. This is really cool. And this is really what I think is at the heart of doing a zine. It's not about spending money to make something fancy. There is beauty in stuff that is really raw. And I think this is a perfect example of this. And I'll share a little of his letter. He writes, Hi Ted, my name is Ethan Dean, 17, and I have mailed you two of my personal zines. Every Cabin at Skate Camp was a zine that I made over the summer at a skateboard summer camp in the Sequoias National Park in California. I interned there as a media intern, which involved helping younger campers create a weekly zine for camp. This zine is not the camp zine, but as an intern, we were required to pursue a certain artistic style and make a zine. One of my greatest inspirations is Ed Ruscha, in particular his earlier photo books. I decided to objectively and precisely take photographs on the back and front of every cabin. I used a tripod fixed at one length. My lens is fixed at one focal length, my settings relatively the same, and at the same distance from each cabin. By creating basically a portrait for each cabin, I tried to give some sort of identity to the camp through the camper's living habits, and the camp's non-human identity was exposed through the nature and placement. After creating the scene, I came home to LA and decided to make a similar zine, a study of paper clips. Again, I set up a tripod, flash, and false wall in order to take portrait slash still life pictures. The flash's purpose was to give the paper clips a strong shadow and liveliness. Both of these zines were produced in the traditional cut, glue, copy manner, a technique that is perfectly imperfect. Thank you for your insight and experience. Your videos are always interesting and informing. Enjoy, Ethan Dean. Ethan, thank you. These are absolutely fabulous, and I love the fact that they're lo-fi and handmade. The world needs more of this. Thank you. Special thanks to everyone who sent something in today, including the guy who sent me the title to his RV. This was misdelivered. I'm going to return it this afternoon. Um, anyway, honest mistake. Anyway, um, I think it's really important to share this work on the show with you guys because it's important to see what your peers are doing and it's important to also see work that's not just online all the time as a JPEG, to see what somebody does curating and putting together a book or a zine of their own work. And I think that's really awesome. So these are very special to me. I've mentioned that before. If you have sent me something, I probably haven't gotten gotten to it yet. As I'm serious, there's still two stacks over here. And so the next two weeks, I don't want to inundate you guys with mail videos, but I'm trying to get a lot of that done because there's a lot of really neat work in here that I want to share with you guys. And so anyway, some cool stuff coming up. I am in the process of sort of overhauling my studio space. I've got some weird lighting going on today because I'm working on that. And so once I get to where I'm happy with that, I will share that with you guys. It's been a year and a half since I've been here and I want to update a little bit and spruce things up. And also interesting note, uh, probably won't happen. Well, definitely won't happen until this summer 
probably about June or so. The school that I went to this morning for career day, um, I have been asked to teach a summer camp. And we're going to be talking about making videos and photography and YouTube and social media and all this stuff. And so I told them I would do it on the condition that I could incorporate it into the show. So assuming we have enough signups, that will be something that um, I'll incorporate a little bit into these videos this summer. So something to look forward to. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, share it, and as always, subscribe to The Art of Photography. Hit that subscribe button so you'll always be up to date on all the latest and greatest things that we do here. Until the next time, go pick up your camera, do some good, and dance like nobody's watching. Until the next video, I'll see you guys then. Later.